Okay, this is um, a video on how to solve a step response RLC circuit uh, when you're given initial conditions. This is, oops, sorry, this is similar to what you will see on exams. Often this is a very long question, so to make it simpler, we give you initial conditions. So these are examples. Because you have i of 0 and the i of 0, you already know that first we gotta find i of t. That's sort of you're stuck finding that before solving the rest in this case the circuit wants the question wants vc of t which is here so we're going to go to step two in my how to and the first thing will be to draw the circuit for t larger than zero so i got started i had a failed attempt on my first video so this comes out of the circuit because this this switch opens and then these two 10 ohm resistors become in series because this current here goes to zero, right? So this is zero current, you can leave it out. And then 10 and 10, I already put them in series here at 20. And then I copied everything else the same, 25 volts, 0.25 farads, 0.5 hannas, and five ohms. But now five is in parallel with 20 um, so instead I'm going to draw an even simpler circuit, maybe down here, 20 in parallel with 5, is 20 times 5 is 100 divided by 25 is 4, this current's coming down, and it's 0.5, and this voltage uh, capacitor is this way, and then there's 25 volts here. So this is um, a series circuit. And in series RLC circuits, we know that uh, alpha is R divided by 2L. And so this will be 4 divided by 2 times half is 1. So alpha is 4. And now let's say omega is for all circuits 1 over square root of LC. And so I know that L is half, and the C is one quarter, one half quarter. That means it's square root of eight, because it's you know one divided by eight. This eight go in the, goes in the numerator there. Square root of eight. I'm gonna cheat and say it's a little bit less than three, because square root of nine is three. From here. I know that the circuit is overdamped, and then I know the natural solution to the circuit. Even if this 25 volts were something else, or if they were zero, if they were zero, we would have the answer, I mean, sort of the answer we need to just use the initial conditions here. But I have the um, IL, but the natural solution, actually it's the same current here, will be k1 e to the minus s1 oh oh forgot to find s so let me let me find s1 and s2 first s1 and s2 is minus alpha plus minus square root of alpha squared minus the resonant frequency squared resonant resonance frequency squared minus 4 plus minus square root of now it's 16 minus 8 another square root of 8 so it's minus 4 plus minus 2.8. I'm already going to put here minus 4 minus 2.8, it's minus 6.8t. And plus k2 e to the uh, minus 1.2t. And this here is in amps. And this is just the natural solution. I said this in class, I'm going to say this again. This is by far the most common mistake people make which is now already going to the final solution without telling me that the what the force solution is i still need the force solution because we're finding current for t tending to infinity so the force solution is i l of infinity which is what happens in steady state and what happens is for steady state the capacitor is open and the inductor is shorted so the, the current through the inductor, actually through this whole circuit, goes to zero. 
the voltage across a capacitor doesn't. Actually, in this case, it goes to 25 volts. But we're asking the current through the inductor. And just this is zero. So by chance, we don't need to, when we add these two, it's going to be IN is going to be the same as IL of T. So what you do next is define K1 and K2 using these initial conditions. And I think that was the main question uh, from the student who emailed me. How do I get to K1 and K2? I believe this is the same method as you have in DFIQ. Um, differential equations, so this, this method comes from there. So I'm going to evaluate this expression here at t equals 0. And what happens is because t equals 0, e to the 0 is 1, so this comes out of this expression here. On the other hand, I know that i of 0 is 20 milliamps, so I'm going to call 20 milli on this side here, i of 0 is 20, equals k1 plus k2. So I know that k1 is 20 milli minus k2. And then I'm going to do the derivative. So when I do the derivative of these two here, first I do the derivative and then I evaluate it at 0. The IDT at 0 is going to be minus 100 milliamps. On the right side, the derivative will be minus 6.8 times k1 times this exponential. And again, it's at 0. So this comes gets out of that. So it's minus 6.8 k1 and minus 1.2 k2. So now I have a, a value for k1, not a value, I have k1 here, it's 20 milli minus k2, so I can put plug in to here. This is a lot of math. But um, maybe I should I should do this here, given that people have been asking. Um, six times two is twelve. Plus one is thirteen point six. Uh, one thirty six. It's not thirteen point six. It's it's uh, one thirty six milli plus. 6.8 k2 minus 1.2 k2. So this 136 goes on the other side as plus. So I have 36 milli is 5.6 k2. So k2 is 36 milli divided by almost 6. And I'm going to call this 6, maybe a little bit larger than 6. I'm going to call this 6.2 milliamps and therefore k1 will be um, 20 milli minus 6.2 that's going to be 14 13.8 milli oh it's not milliamps it's just milli this is just a scalar so now I can finally write the current so let's go to the next page here I can finally write that I L of T is 13.8 e to the minus 6.8 t plus 6.2 e to the minus 1.2 t and all this is milliamps this is still not the answer even though this is the basic you know solution for this problem once you find i of t you're 80 percent there so on the exam if there is a a question a 20 point question and you do show me the solution for the RLC which is finding the circuit behavior showing that's over damped this is a, the form of the solution showing that you did find the forced solution or in difficult terms it's the particular solution and then adding the two and finding the two coefficients and writing IL of T is already mainly the, the main thing you can find out of this circuit but really the question here is VC of T and this question means we want to know what happened at that at t equals zero and um, once you have this current here you can um, do two things either do the integral of the current and use this 25 um, volts to find the constant the, um, or 
you can say that this you can use KVL. Let's do that second one because then I don't need to integrate anything and say the following. It's minus VL minus VR plus VC minus 25 is zero. The reason I'm writing KVL is that KVL will give me VC. So I can leave VC as my, so the question here is what is VC? So I'm going to leave VC as my main variable, um, main unknown, and I'm going to define everybody else. So I only need to use this the second circuit there because it's pretty larger than zero. So VC will be VL plus VR plus 25. And that 25 is what I had expected. So it's a particular solution to the voltage across the capacitor. That is the voltage across the capacitor T to, inf to infinity anyway. Now VL is L di dt. And VR is 4 Um, no, it's I divided by four. Oopsie. It is V equals IR, of course. I am thinking IL here. It's IL times four. Yeah. Let me just do IL here. Plus 25. Now I need to do the derivative of this and then sum it with itself. And I am going to go to the end here because a lot of people said, well, I don't know how to do derivative or I don't know how to find anything else there so I would like to show you so this will be 13.8 times minus 6.8 divided by 2 because it's half here e to the minus 6.80 and then this will be minus 6.2 times 1.2 divided by 2 e to the minus 1.2 t this is all in milliamps and then I'm going to multiply this all by 4 plus I have space here 4 times 13.8 is 27.6 uh, 54 55.2 e to the minus 6.8 t and 6 times 4 is 24.8 plus 24.8 e to the minus 1.2 t plus oh all this is in milliamps uh, plus 25 so vc will be e to the minus 6.8 t times Let's see, this is 3.4. I'm not sure. I'm going to have this without a calculator. Times 3.4 plus 55.2 plus e to the minus 1.2 t. And then this is... 3.6 minus this will be 24.8 minus 3.6 times 1.2 all this milliamps plus 25 oh actually it's not milliamps it's milli plus 25 volts this is incorrect so what happens is I multiply this by 4 ohms and I multiply this by half um, Henry's so all this is in volts but it's still milli so if I had a calculator right now I would multiply 13.8 by 3.4 and sum and add that to 55.2 so this will be a number this will be a number but it's only three terms so th so the, the voltage across the capacitor is, has the two roots of that um, equation of the polynomial equation which is uh, minus 6.8 and minus 1.2 and it has the 25 volts so the only difference is that you got to know the coefficients if you're on the exam um, and you're you know uh, short on time 
just leave that indicated. Um, and this is this is actually the voltage across the capacitor over time. And if you see your free T tending to infinity, these are going to go to zero, and the voltage across the capacitor will have 25 volts. I hope this helps, but let me know in case it does not.